Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to another video. This video is a little bit different from what I've normally done. Um, I guess you could technically call it a reading vlog. My very first one, ooh. Um, but basically I just have a stack of books and by stack there's like three, but you know, three pancakes is a stack. So I'm saying a stack of books that I've had on the go for a little bit too long for my liking. So I thought if I made this video, it would be a really good push for me to actually get them finished. So that is the plan. Let me show you what we'll be reading. First book that we have is Spirit of Place by Susan Owens. This is a very intricate non-fiction that's all about the British landscape and how it's evolved as an art form kind of throughout the centuries. About 150 pages through this, so I'm about halfway now. Um, it's not that it's a dull read, it's in fact very interesting to me. It's quite a niche topic, so it might not be for everyone, but I'm just not always having the motivation to pick it up. One of the reasons that I'm doing this video is because um, I really need to return this to the library. So that's book number one. The second book, I'm reading it on my phone, which is why I can't show you because I actually film on my phone. You can probably tell by the quality of my videos but it is botanical folk tales of britain and ireland and it's written by lisa schneider if i recall it'll be here and i'm about 60 percent of the way through that that one's a really nice easy read because it is just little folk tales so they can last between like two and ten pages long it's quite easy to just pick up throughout the day and then finally we have the beast the beast that has been haunting me for so very long now, um, and that is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. I have actually read about 350 pages of this. Yeah, 350 pages. And yet, it really, it's not really showing. This is a mammoth book, and I have been on and off reading it since November. For those that are curious, it's now July. <laughs> a long time to have a book on the go. Again, it's not that I don't like this book. I think it's really good. It's written really well, but I just have really, I have big book phobia, guys, and um, it's very intimidating. I think having this to keep me accountable will be a good thing. And also I really need to return this to my boyfriend. It's not my book. So without further ado, I think we should get reading because it's a little bit earlier. It's still the afternoon. I think I'm going to start with my non-fiction because I need a little bit more concentration for that. So I'm going to stop rambling now and we are going to get cosy and we're going to get reading. Onwards. now. I managed to read about 70 odd pages of Spirit of Place. I forget how much longer it takes for me to read non-fiction books than fiction. Just from those pages that I've read today, we've gone through Constable Turner, the pre ruffalo movement, John Ruskin's art criticisms, also the Bronte sisters and more of a literary aspect of landscape. So much information is packed in so incredibly tightly in here so it's, it's a little bit of a hard read at times for that purpose only but I am really really enjoying it. That being said I am now starting to flag a little bit so I'm gonna switch for the evening, try and conquer a little bit of Jonathan Strange and Mr Norrell and I will probably check in with you tomorrow morning. Well, good morning. We meet again. Just a very quick check in for you, I guess. So I didn't read quite as much as I wanted to last night. I realized in hindsight that um, I probably needed to do a little recap of what I've read so far. And I actually managed to find a pretty good um, like book club 
Reddit thread that was actually very helpful to kind of getting me up to speed again. I forgot just how dry the wit and the humour in this book is. It's it's quite funny. And I also forgot how many threads of storyline there are in this book. It really is like trying to keep track of some sort of like case, like you're trying to like pin all of these parts of the story and different interesting elements and characters together and it's just bombastic in a really good way. Still intimidating though and so I'm excited. So I'm gonna pour myself some of this, get going with this and I'll see you outside. I'm back from errands and a little date day that I took myself on. Actually, that might be up by now, so I'll put a link if you want to see what I got up to. Picked up some cute little carnations for myself because why not? I also managed to get through another 50 pages or so whilst I was out. I went to a really nice little bookshop, coffee shop situation, which I've never been into before and it was absolutely delightful. Now I'm back, I think I'm going to make myself a cup of fresh mint tea. There's nothing that says summer to me more than that maybe like lemony lemonade lemony lemonade wow honestly i probably should go back to a different book but i'm really feeling continuing with this and i mean we've made headway we were like here yesterday so pretty proud of myself It has been a few hours. I've read a bit, I've worked a bit, I've made dinner, and now I'm ready for a little check-in before I sign off for the evening. So in terms of total pages I've managed to read so far, with two out of the three books, I read 248 pages, which is not half bad. I've been really enjoying um, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell in particular. I feel like it's really starting to pick up the pace again, and I'm starting to see how all of these wild characters and parts of the stories are starting to come together, starting to see how they might interact, because they do feel quite separate at the beginning of the book, even though they're all very interesting. The characters in this book are really entitled, and I love a sarcastic or a snarky narrator, and that is what we've got here. And this is done in such like a, a stereotypical like English way. It's quite low-key and dry humour, and that just makes it so in keeping with the setting and the kind of polite society that the majority of the characters are operating within. Spirit of Place is also going well. It's fascinating how this book is written chronologically and integrates societal attitudes and advancements throughout it, and yet past thoughts and ideologies are detailed with so much clarity that you can really see where these ideas and these concepts originated from, and then also how they have evolved to what we know and recognise in this day and age. Plus it's fascinating to have a little bit more context for paintings and prints and literature that we already are quite familiar with. And as I mentioned before, it's just so varied. Today I've read about landscape in war, one of the first parts of the Industrial Revolution and that impact on the landscape and perception of the landscape. And then prior to that, looking at gothic elements and landscape as an unsettling and highly evocative use in literature and story storytelling, as well as being an integral part of folklore. I just finished a chapter that was all about fairies and the god Pan and landscape as folklore, and that has got me hankering of some folk tales. So I'm going to wrap this up because I would like to get in a few stories from my ebook, which I have not picked up yet at all since I started this video. So that is the folk tales of Britain and Ireland. I'd like to get some of those in and I will see you tomorrow. So I am finished up with my work for today. I just finished editing the footage that I have for this um, vlog so far and I realised I never actually explained what this book was about so I thought I'd just give a very quick overview here in case you still want to know. So this is a speculative fiction book or tome set in the early 1800s in England during the Napoleonic Wars. In this world, magic is real, but magicians sort of act more as academic scholars 
and magic isn't really utilised in a practical way or in an active way. That is, except for Mr Norrell. He is the last remaining true magician that practices magic and that catches the attention of the nation. Mr Norrell is a very fussy, rude, sort of like a gatekeeper uh, figure of magic and magical books. But he comes to know of another emerging magician called Jonathan Strange, who is everything that Mr Norrell is not. He is a young, handsome, affable gentleman. And as you can imagine, lots of trouble and mischief and lots of individuals' lives are changed or put at stake. And it's all set against the backdrop of a fey kingdom and a mysterious gentleman with thistle down hair who is also causing his own mischief and also as i said set against the backdrop of england during the napoleonic war it looks at the north south divide in england it looks at class it looks at race it looks at the patriarchy and obviously lots and lots of magic anyway yeah now you actually know what i'm reading <laughs> so much reading because we have had the most perfect reading weather conditions. We've had so much rain, we've had like three thunderstorms and it's been the perfect excuse to just curl up and read. So with Spirit of Place I have made a bit more progress. I've made it to the last section which is very exciting and at this point we've kind of arrived in the very early 1900s and starting to look at the use of railway and um, air travel in the landscape as artists perspectives and also as societal attitudes change and evolve so I'm really looking forward to seeing how that all going to shape up in this final section. The other thing that I just want to really quickly say, this is one of the most beautifully designed books I've read for a really long time and this is just such a joy to pick up and read. Like The cover's beautiful, we know this, but the font choices, the layout choices, they're just beautiful. Anyway, I know that's completely not to do with the actual book but it, it adds to the reading experience so <laughs> now you know and obviously I still also have Jonathan Strange and Mr Norrell on the go as well and I have made very significant headway I am on page I think I'm on page 800 and something now 808 I've only got about 200 pages left only 200 pages wow this book is so long and the plot is just really starting to get going even more. It's getting really exciting. All the characters are mingling. The other thing that I want to mention is the use of footnotes throughout this book. Some of them are definitely worth reading because they refer to specifically the ones that refer to the Raven King because he's a character that's mentioned a lot but I haven't met him so far and I doubt really that I'm gonna. They're definitely worth reading if you want to but this could be like a hot take, I don't know, but a lot of them are kind of just there for the vibes. You don't necessarily have to read them to enjoy and understand the book. Yeah, it adds to the ambience of the story and it adds to the context and stuff, but it was just getting in the way of the flow of the story for me. That's probably just the kind of reader that I am. This is this is the actual storyline and this is the footnotes. And the footnotes are fictional for the most part, which is a really, really fun concept. Like going through this book, it just really adds to like the vibes, as I was saying. Like, kind of like dark academia vibes. A lot of the characters in this book have their own libraries and these libraries are filled with like huge tomes of like academic magical texts which more than likely would have their own fair share of really either convoluted or winding footnotes and so it's really really in keeping and that just makes the whole thing really special. It really adds to the experience because you kind of feel like you're in the library. <laughs> And the other thing is that they have these, in this edition anyway, these beautiful illustrations, really wispy kind of drawings. Really enjoying this, gonna start rambling, gonna start reading. Well, dear friends, it has been a week since I started this little reading vlog and I'm delighted to say that I managed to complete all of the books that I intended to read. So I'm feeling pretty chuffed with myself. 
The one I was most happy to have finished was Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. A really solid book, literally, because I could take someone out with this. But it's not going to be a fave for me. Still great though. My favourite characters were some of their supporting characters, Childermas, Vinculus and Stephen. Um, both of the titular characters were kind of grey. They want to do good but there's a selfishness and a chaos to them but you do kind of find yourself rooting for them at times or feeling sympathetic towards them. The characters are pretty layered and complex and that makes sense because there's so much space to get to know them but even the characters that you dislike as a reader, the antagonists so to speak, are really complex and compelling. I'm thinking specifically about um, the gentleman with the thistle down hair or the Fay King whose name I don't think we actually ever learn. This was highly enjoyable once I got into the swing of it again. I'm pretty impressive that it managed to stay in my imagination for as long as it has done. I loved the different settings, specifically the northern settings in Yorkshire and also I believe Northumbria at times, and just how the magic is described. The magic system is based on quite traditional ideas of English magic in many ways. Lots of spell casting from old dusty books in libraries by learned gen gentlemen and then mixed with kind of like prominent folklore about magic that's imbued in the natural world and also the fae slash fairy world. Susanna Clark kind of married the two concepts together really really beautifully and naturally and added her own wonderful twists. I realised that throughout this video I didn't actually really mention a whole lot about botanical folk tales for Britain and Ireland by Lisa Schneider but I did also manage to finish up this collection of stories. It's lovely to be introduced to less well-known, um, older or more regionally specific folk tales which most of them I'd never ever heard of before um, and they're really fun to just dive into because they're so short. If I had to pick three favourites I think I would say Mossy Coat which is kind of a retelling or original form of Cinderella, I'm not sure, Mayon and the Willow and The Curse of Pantanas. I think. There were so many great ones. And then finally we have Spirit of Place. Susan Owens has a really engaging tone to her writing with some more humorous elements coming through at times which is so lovely to find in a non-fiction writer. I think I was most engrossed by the earlier chapters in the book because that's the stuff that I knew the least about. So it was also a very shiny and new information. I think it's an excellent resource. So if you happen to be looking for a book about how artists and writers have interpreted and represented British landscape from early medieval to basically present day, then this is the book for you. This was a very niche read. <laughs> so in total, this week I have read 872 pages, which I am pretty pleased with. And the best part is that I no longer have these books looming over me and my TBR. Having this video basically be an accountability partner um, helped a lot too. And you know, once I actually got over that initial hurdle of wanting to pick them up and having the motivation to restart them, I actually really, really thoroughly enjoyed all of them. It was just getting over that initial resistance to picking them up. So anyway, thank you so much for being here, especially because you made it to the end and this is probably my longest video yet. So thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your day or night. Take care and I will see you soon.